The Nigerian army says its operation Crocodile Smile, which is kicking off across the country this week, is not targeted at the NSAR's protests. Army spokesperson Mose Sege noted that the exercise scheduled to commence from October 20 to December 31 has no relationship with any lawful protest under any guise whatsoever. The cyber warfare operation, he stated, was designed to identify, track and counter negative propaganda on social media and across cyberspace. He reassured all well-meaning Nigerians of the commitment of the force to the sustenance of peace and security in the country. Joining us now, we have, um, we'll be joined later by Femi Lawson, who is a public affairs analyst. But right now we have uh, via Zoom, Ladipo Johnson, a lawyer and public affairs analyst. A pleasure to have you join us on The Breakfast. Good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm going to start with, um, of course, uh, Mr. Johnson. The army reminds us that this is not uh, the first Operation Crocodile Smile. Do you think that this is a just coincidence? Well, yes, they have said that um, this is actually the sixth edition of Crocodile Smile and that um, this will concentrate on um, cyber crime and uh, the insurgency. However, um, you cannot blame Nigerians um, about the timing of um, the exercise. Uh, yes, um, conventionally, we're informed by the army that it usually takes place um, between October to the end of the year. Um, but, as I say, with all that has been going on and with the fact that um, some people actually mooted the idea that um, the army should be pulled out, um, brought out to handle the protesters, um, the protesters and a lot of um, well-meaning Nigerians um, are rather um, suspicious of the, of the timing of the exercise. All right, uh, let's come to you, Mr. Fermi Lawson. Uh, thank you for joining us. I, I wasn't aware you'd um, tuned in already. Um, okay, isn't it a red flag when they say that the cyber warfare exercise is the first to be conducted in the history of the Nigerian army? That was part of the statement issued earlier announcing um, the Crocodile Smile exercise. Isn't that, I mean... A red flag in itself, considering the protest that's going across, championed mainly on social media. Well, uh, of course, I would not want to be unnecessarily suspicious about the intention of the army, especially when you realize that we are in an era where fake news has become so dominant on our social media space. So it may not be out of place for the army to have targeted this operation, Kokoda Smile Street, towards uh, the cyberspace. But I think what is important to us is to continually emphasize on the role of the army and its mode of engagement with the civil society. Like I said, we may not necessarily need, need to be suspicious. We may, and I don't think this is uh, out of place, like I said. Uh, until it violates those, you know, fundamental ethics that we know the military stands for, until it begins to violate, you know, the fundamental human rights of our people. I don't think we have any reason to fear. And like I said, we're in an era where, you know, Facebook and like when the web fake news is like almost the order of the day, especially, you know, as we continue to see the effect of this post, you know, protest, you know, demanding for a men to police brutality in the country. All right, back to uh, Ladipo Johnson. Um, I'm, I'm, I want to quickly ask about um, other government agencies that have been set up, I believe, that are still currently functional to um, tackle issues of cybercrime um, instead of the Nigerian army. Um, and also, isn't it possible that the army works in silence with regards um, investigating cyber crime? Do we need to launch a whole army operation 
um, to tackle cyber crime? Um, you're spot on, actually. Um, I wondered whether um, I didn't know what I was thinking of. Um, I was wondering personally why um, they would have to go onto the streets to fight cybercrime. Um, one would have thought that the director rates for military intelligence uh, would do that um, from their computers, over the internet, and what have you. And as you say, we have, and that's part of the problem we had with SARS. For those who you think have committed cyber offenses, cyber crimes, you have the EFCC, especially the financial crimes, um, popularly known as the Yahoo Yahoo boys and what have you. And then you had the um, police especially the SARS, um, stopping people, grabbing their phones and saying, oh, unlock your phone, we want to know what is in there. So um, one wonders, but again, we give them the benefit of the doubt. One wonders why the uh, military should get involved in that on the streets. Yes, we understand the insurgency, and they say they're concentrating on the northeast, northwest, uh, north central. But um, we don't understand uh, why the military would want to fight cybercrime on the streets. I know that they have um, computer sections, they have intelligence officers. We all know that we have the mili um, Directorate of Military Intelligence. So one wonders, you've hit the nail on the head with your question. Um, and these are part of the things that make people, um, as I say, suspicious of the whole exercise at this particular time. All right, I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Lawson. Uh, my question is in two parts. The first part has to do with, in, on the heels of the announcement by the army, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, is quoted in uh, newspapers as saying that the, no government will fold its arms and allow anarchy to take over uh, the streets. The second part of my question is, do you believe that hoodlums are indeed taking over the protests and making it something that is destroying uh, the fragile unity of this country? That, that's the situation as we speak. And uh, I think first and foremost, it's important to say that uh, the war on terrorism or any form of insurgency in the world we live today has migrated, you know, not, ju not just from the physical war, to a war of intelligence. One of the reasons why we have not been able to you know, defeat Boko Haram today is the reflection of how limited you know, our capacity as a nation is. When you talk about intelligence gathering and, of course, the technological approach to this warfare. And I think uh, the army launch of you know, the cyber war is very relevant and, it, of course, it's a fundamental approach when you talk about you know, intelligence gathering and uh, you know, in the war against uh, insurgency. But I want to, on the other, on the other hand, you know, disagree with the Minister of Information who wants to permit the decision of the government as it is not yet taken anyway to move against protesters on the basis of you know, the involvement of Islam in the protest. The truth is that there have been cases of violence. Only yesterday there was a report of the death of one of the protesters in Abuja, almost on a daily basis, reports emanating from Ikudu in Lagos. It's so worrisome. We've had reported cases of rape. You know, almost every day people are robbed of their you know items under the guise of this protest. Only two days ago, you know, the governor for sure state, while addressing protesters, you know, had to be you know ferried out of the ground because hoodlums practically took over the protest and launched an attack on a, on a city governor. So the truth is that Islam are already infiltrating you know, the process and anarchy is beginning to emerge. But I think what the government should rather focus on is how to prevent you know, Islam from you know, disrupting peaceful protests like we have witnessed. Protests are civil rights. The citizens have every right to protest and this nobody can take away from them. But any protest that will involve anarchy, that will continue 
to lead to destruction of property and of course, loss of life has to be discouraged. So it is important to raise that alarm that Islam is already infiltrating this protest. But I think the protest, as it is, is not an action, you know, conducted or being embarked upon by Islams. They are usually peaceful. They are largely conducted by peaceful protesters. And if they are concerned about the situation by Islams, I think that should, you know, be a basis for government to actually provide more security. All right, let me come to you, uh, Mr. Johnson. Um, as a follow-up to that uh, question, uh, some lawyers are saying that they are going to, they are calling rather on the International Criminal Court to uh, pay attention and hold the Minister of Information liable should anything happen uh, to these protesters. And uh, they are also saying that these protesters, and then we have this uh, con um, Fake news, that's what some people are describing it, uh, that it takes 30 days for the UN. That has been fact-checked to be incorrect. Um, if anything should happen to protesters, that the UN will intervene. Does this speak to a bigger picture of dis the same um, conversation around distrust? And I want you to clear the air on these particular issues. Going to the International Criminal Court and saying that the UN will um, intervene after 30 days of protests? Well, the, the truth is this. The minister does not have any power to even call out the police to you know, talk more of inviting the army to intervene in a civil protest. And I believe the army leadership as presently constituted would not you know, allow itself to be you know, turned around and, of course, ordered around by the Minister of Information. It is within the discretion you know, of the President, who is the Commander in Chief, and on the, of course, with certain approval of the National Assembly to invite you know, the military into you know, taking charge of internal security, you know, like we currently, uh, like people are, of course, anticipating. But I want to believe that what we have on our hands are not even what the police, as it is, cannot even talk. That is why we've not even found anti riot policemen on the streets yet. So nobody would want to assume that a situation that has not even called out anti riot policemen will bring out the military. I don't think this is correct, and I think this is, these are just fear yeah, being raised by the people, and I don't think the minister has that power to invite the military. He may, they have, he may have expressed that as his opinion, but I don't think that should be taken as the opinion of the federal government. The minister does not have that power to invite the military into this process. And another thing we must understand is that until crimes are committed, I don't think, just like uh, you mentioned, that the United Nations or the International Criminal Court would start making such statements, which, of course, you must have verified are not true. And like I said, we are in an era of fake news. People can just sit down, concord stories, and you know, spread all sort of information that are not true. And this will continually heighten the tension rather than address the situation that we have found ourselves. So, and that is why I think it is very, very relevant, not just for the army alone, but for our intelligence organizations to do more, you know, work in the area of, you know, cyber security and intelligence gathering, you know, on the social media, KCD, because this is one platform where fake news and all sort of misinformation flies around most. Uh, Ladiko Johnson, I'm going back to you. Uh, um, a few months ago, um, the whole world witnessed what happened in the United States, and I believe it also spread across other countries with regards to the Black Lives Matter protest that eventually turned into, well, well some parts, of course, witnessed, you know, looting and, you know, destruction. Um, the United States, of course, struggled at first to, to manage it, but eventually, I guess that they were, you know, able to calm, you know, tend the tension in those parts. I want you to compare... Um, how that was handled, um, the reaction of those protesters and the behavior of those protesters to what is happening in Nigeria today. And how do you think we can better manage um, you know, our current uh, uh, protests? Thank you. Um, well, the, as we all saw, um, I think both protests emanated really or have emitted from the people 
They're not protests that were planned and they came about due to certain circumstances. Now, the terms of engagement, um, you always wonder. I, um, I was a student's union um, leader and president. And at that time, you always wondered um, the terms of engagement that the police in Nigeria had or have at this time. Um, over there, you knew they would always wait until um, the protests became violent. Um, over here, the fact that you're on the street alone, congregating, they say that it is illegal. Um, thank God that has changed in the last two weeks. They now use the term, even the police use the term, peaceful protesters. Um, so basically, um, I think therein lies um, the difference and the similarities. But how it could be managed, firstly, the protesters, as someone said, um, were not spoken to to go onto the streets. So they do not believe that um, they will be spoken to to come off the streets. They believe that they must see certain steps being taken. Um, once that is done, if steps are taken by government um, that instill in the populace confidence that a proper reform has begun, is started, then uh, I believe that uh, things will wind down. And um, containing it, um, as um, my co-guest has said, involves um, getting the police to be there to protect the peaceful protesters against the miscreants or the sponsored thugs that have been coming in to disturb them. Now, once these things are in place, they see government is acting and they see that it is peaceful and everyone is free to go and you have a reduction of um, police brutality or thugs attacking peaceful protesters, then you will see that it will have been contained and gradually it will wind down as confidence is being built that government is taking concrete steps. All right. Um, still, still with you, Mr. Johnson. Um, you mentioned, of course, the steps the government um, should take. But I, I believe that the government has taken some steps. So first of all, why aren't these steps um, enough for the protesters? Why don't they believe that these are enough? Um, what are the things that you feel government yes. you know, might be also dragging their feet to do you know, that would give the, the protesters some confidence you know, that they probably should start going back home because the government has done enough. That's the first one. And then the second one, I also want to, you mentioned, you know, that it, it would wind down. Do you believe that this would wind down or it might metamorphose into um, other demands? <clears throat> yeah, well, um, 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 I don't know which one to take first. The other demands will come and have started to come up because it's gone way beyond SARS. It's gone way beyond SARS. Now, government itself <clears throat> have admitted or has admitted, the vice president in his tweet, I think two days ago, said it, that they've been tardy, they've been slow in um, trying, in um, taking steps. Now, yes, they have taken certain steps. They say SARS has been disbanded. Um, but I'll have you recall that for certain amount of years now, they've said they're ending SARS, they said they're reforming SARS, etc. So the, the youth have no confidence in what government has said. If I were in government, Look, the first thing, sir, it's unfortunate 
that in Nigeria things like this don't happen. But the first thing that would have instilled confidence, sorry, <clears throat> is if the IGP himself had gone on suspension, had resigned, or had been removed. You do not have um, an organization within an organization that has run amok like NSAS did. People have come out to the streets spontaneously to complain about it. And then on the day that you say that you have disbanded this group, you still have police people shooting at peaceful protesters in Abuja. Uh, Mr. Johnson, so let me, let me interject and ask signal. you something you said. Mr. Um, Johnson, let me interject quickly before um, you lose your train of thought on that. Uh, you said the IGP, be, you, people are asking for the IGP to be removed. Of what impact will the removal be to the protests? What message will it send? And with the way things are going, do you think that will be enough for the protesters? Yes, look, that would be a first step. It will send a signal to the entire world that this government has the willpower to look into itself, into one of its agencies. And it would have tremendous impact on the rank and file of the police force itself. That is even more important than how the protesters will feel. They'll feel that, wow, there's accountability now. We have to be careful. We have to follow the Constitution. We have to follow the rule of This government is holding us to account. Oh. Now, once those things don't happen, it's the same IG that now says to you, oh, I've disbanded um, SARS. I now have SWAT and whatever. Of course, you have to have SWAT. But the timing... The timing is not proper. We're not saying let armed robbers do what they want to do. No. No one is saying that. But you have a situation on your hand. It involves emotions. We can, well, not me, the youth can afford to be emotional. They can afford to take decisions and make demands without intelligence reports. Mr. President, as Commander-in-Chief, cannot afford to be emotional. He cannot afford to say, why are they on the streets? He can't. He has to balance things, look All at right. things. Let, let's say, bring okay, back... The um... best way to get rid of this, first things first, Mr. IGP, on the watch, this has happened. All let right. us look into it. If he doesn't want to go as far as saying, um, please step aside, let's look, look into it. Please let DIG, this DIG take over for the time being. All right, let's bring in Mr. Lawson yes, now. Um, I, I want to ask you the question of um, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Uh, we also have Social Rights and um, uh, Serap coming up to say that um, they will sue if the army is um, brought out for, uh, I mean, for this protest, Nigerians on the street, if they see them anywhere near these protesters that sue the federal government. Um, does that really concern you? Because you, you are saying we shouldn't be so alarmed that this is not going to happen, especially with the army coming out to say they are not, uh, it is not meant for the protesters. But when you see senior citizens like this saying they are going to sue, what does that bring to your mind? Well, like I said, it's, uh, of course, people are entitled to their right of expression. I want to strongly believe that the situation as it is today has not in any way degenerated to the point where the army will intervene. And I insist that as we speak today, not even the anti-riot policemen have been brought to the situation because the protests all over the country have been largely peaceful. And in the cases where we have had, you know, hoodlums coming in to hijack the protests, like what we had in Osho a few days ago, like the incidences of attack on protesters in Abuja and some other form of violence being experienced in part of Lagos, Ikorodu, you know, and some other places. I don't think the situation has degenerated to the point where the army will come and intervene. 
these, of course, like you identified, were you know, opinions or a, a sentiment that have emanated from the social media. And that's why I said we're in an era where fake news becomes so dominant that sometimes it may even want to de you know, de determine the direction of the debate. We must be careful about this. The police authority, the civil authority to address protests, that is where it becomes dry. Uh, available, the police mobile unit has not been deployed, the anti riot unit has not been deployed, and I don't see there's any reason why all these processes will be jumped and will not bring the army in to command, you know, quell what is ordinarily, you know, a, a peaceful process like it has been so far. I think uh, these are mere alarms, and I know the military, as finally constituted, would not, for whatever reason, degenerate to the point of coming in at this point to come and take over what ordinarily is the duty you know, of the police. That is, right. even if the protest starts getting out of hand, I don't want to believe, and like I said, I don't want to believe the launch of this particular operation of Crocodile Sea is targeted at that. Because, like I said, the war on terrorism now is a war of intelligence, is a war that has gone to the cyber. And I think the army is in the right direction, you know, to right. focus its operation as it is. All right, Mr. Family Lawson. Towards that space. But I don't think there should be reason for Nigerians, particularly those who are presently engaged in protests, to be afraid or to you know, raise all this kind of alarm. I don't think we are very... Okay. Uh, we're going to have so, to, um, of course, quickly step in here. We would ask uh, you both uh, to hold on Ladipo Johnson also. Uh, we would, of course, be back uh, with you guys in a very, very short while. Of course, the conversation continues here on uh, The Breakfast. Stay with us. All right, you're welcome. Uh, good to know you're still watching Unplus TV Africa. Um, just before we went on that break, we were talking about the end size and uh, the position of the army with the crocodile smile, the yes. unrelatedness of both uh, events, even though protesters are saying this is a subtle way to come and intimidate them to leave the streets. So we're, we're not done with that conversation, to be honest. We, we, we have more uh, other dimensions to discuss on The Breakfast this morning. And you, you honestly cannot blame um, protesters you know, for feeling that way. You know, throughout last week, we kept talking about the trust deficit in what the Nigerian government says and what the people hear and what they believe, that there is that problem. Um, and over the weekend also, there were so many of these new videos of people coming out to share their stories. Um, I don't know if you saw the woman who spoke about her brother being killed. Mm, and, saw the man who, um, who was shot and had his leg amputated exactly. after his um, wedding. The, the, it, there's a woman who talked about her brother being killed. Um, they didn't tell her he had been killed. They still collected 350,000 naira from her, sent her to Abuja on a wild goose chase. She eventually came back and then eventually they opened up to say he had been killed. So there's a lot of these stories stories that keep coming up every day, that pain and that anger and those sores in the hearts of Nigerians, you can't th push it away. You can't just wake up in the morning and, you know, say, hey, everybody, you know, go. And that's why the protesters most likely need more than just um, statements. Well, and the, 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 the House of Representatives and uh, national, the Senate, they are yes. saying that uh, it's imperative uh, that um, the protesters leave the streets and give government a time to make a decision. That will be what we will be discussing right, uh, with our guest, uh, Mr. Lawson and Mr. Johnson. Uh, in right after this. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.